Now, all right, we ain't done. Okay, we left off talking about Tubal Cain and the ancient Masonic blacksmith god. Right, the gap between, bridging the gap between African and Masonic traditions. And who did we say this was? This was Ogun, the warrior god of iron. Okay, creating a hundred years of Yoruba Freemasonry secret society known as what? Ogboni fraternity. Okay. Well, we ain't gonna get into the article, but celebrating a hundred years of Yoruba Freemasonry. So we know the Yoruba is on that. Okay, you got the Ogun Voodoo Vivi symbol. Okay. We got the Ogboni. Reformed Ogboni fraternity, a Nigerian equivalent to a Masonic lodge deriving mainly from the Efforts of an educated Yoruba angelic and Angelican clergyman, J A T <clears throat> Ogunbia. So he put Ogun in his name, who had been chaplain to the Masonic lodges in Lagos. In 1914, he established a Christian Ogboni. See, this is like Ebony, right? This is where Ebony comes from, the E, Egboni. The E can turn into the O. The O can turn into the E. Right? Ebony, Ogbony, society, both have a Yoruba version of Christianity modeled on the tradition of <clears throat> Ogboni secret society as an alternative to imported Freemasonry. Okay, you like that? The Ogboni secret society wanted to create the world. He said... Come let create Ogun Medicine. Secret Society, Freemasonry, Ogun name right there. Okay. Sacrifice to the Iron God. Right. In West Africa, Ogun is the spirit of iron. In Haiti, he represents weapon reward and fire. This is similar to the Vulcan Roman God of Fire. It's coming from the Birmingham Museum of Art, right? See, this is why I say my shit. When 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 I see something, this these these lectures or study, I don't bills, whatever you want to call them, I don't pre pre research and pre all this shit is on the spot. But I know it's going to work because once you know signs and symbols, you can just hit record. You know you're going to be right. I know it's going to walk me into something occult or Freemasonry or Satanic once you know the symbols, right? That way you can't be tricked because they will repackage some shit and trick you, okay? Um, let's see. You got Louisiana, uh, Haitian voodoo. Where's the Vulcan shit at? That's the flag. Catholicism and the Society of Freemasonry, the flags. Okay, Haitians established their own Masonic lodge. See, Haiti, I said Haiti. Haiti is heavily into that voodoo and Freemasonry shit. Voodoo was primarily practiced by slaves brought to Haiti from Western Central Africa. Okay. One lower has a connection. Birmingham City symbol, the Vulcan. Look at the uh, flag with the red cross. That's Moorish. One of the spirits associated with voodoo is Ogu, also spelled Ogun or Ogun, represented by Saint Jacques Muhir or Saint James. In West Africa, Ogun is the spirit of iron. In Haiti, he represents weapon, reward, and fire. So Haiti got it from Africa. And guess what? This, um, this is similar to the Vulcan Roman god of fire and metalworking. The Vulcan is best known in Birmingham from his statue representing the god acknowledging the city's roots in iron and steel industry. 
So you think that the ancient Africans that was practicing Orisha didn't come before the Vulcan? <clears throat> yeah, they ripped it off. Okay. So then you got the Arcana of Freemasonry and Ogun name on that. Now, we can't talk about the hammer unless we talk about Shango. Okay. Shango. He got the axis, but he's the Yoruba god of thunder. Right? Shango from Sankofa to Stan Lee. Right? Papa Shango. Y'all remember Papa Shango? See the hammer right there? <coughs> Shango. Okay, Shango's hammer. Okay. Shango's hammer. Once again. Show me some more results. The Shango dance. Like the tango dance, right? And ask for a hammer. Thor of Asgard is dead and Shango of the Orishas is the bling. Okay, and ask for a hammer. <clears throat> Right? So you got a lot going on here. Shango's Hammer, the Thunder Rivals, Ogun and Shango. So it's almost like they one in the same. The dance staff do the tango or sango. Right? That's probably why you use a rose when you do the tango. Shango, Thor. Right, so they associating Shango with Thor too. See? What did it say? The Ananasi versus Expander. Who's better than one Thor's hammer? Two axes. Oh, okay, well, they. See, Shango come with the hammer or the axe. So you, you see him with the, uh, remember they said Ogun was represented with the with the machete or the blade. He got the ax. Okay. But this is why the God of War video game, he got a superhero lookalike of the Orisha. But in the video game, God of War, Kratos got a hammer and an axe. Right? So you see the association. <clears throat> now, you ever wonder why they got a female Thor? Hmm? Let's get into it. Wonder why they got a female Thor, right? <clears throat> this was this was wokeism, as y'all like to say, right? The female Thor, right? This was this was wokeism, right? Now, <clears throat> this is the reason why they do this, okay? Well, you know. They got illustrations of her, so it's not like the movie people just pulled this out their ass. It's a reason, right? Jane Foster found Thor's hammer. Okay, it's a reason. Follow me now. 
Why, why can the woman swing Thor's hammer too? Notice it say Thor. She don't have a different name. She's Thor. Female Thor. Right? It, it's, I mean, you said Thor girl. Lady Thor. Female Thor. Female Thor. So you, you see why this is right? Female Thor. Female Thor. Like, they're not going to let you get away with changing the name. Cosmic Lord Lady Thor. Right? See, Natalie Portman will play female Thor. Now, would you call this female propaganda? Bam. Now, the first thing you see, Rosie the Riveter. Right? Look at her with the cloak, doing the Masonic salute. Right? That will you play a part in victory. That's an occult mother goddess symbol. What are some famous female... I mean, what are some famous propaganda? What was World War I woman propaganda? Voluptuous woman in... Encouraging men to exist. <clears throat> so Rosie the Riveter and many other wartime propaganda posters remain relevant, relevant 75 years later. They have endured and evolved. The message continued. Rosie the Riveter. Right? Who is Rosie the Riveter? This is Rosie the Riveter. I just now this is propaganda. The woman who inspired Rosie the Riveter. Okay, what was she known for? Rosie the Riveter is both romantic and heroic figure from World War II era, former housewife who turned war hero. Rosie emerged from the kitchen and built the machinery necessary to fight and win World War II. <clears throat> Sound cute, right? Sound, sound real cute, right? Now, if this was a regular person, why she couldn't just do her job and that be it? Widely acknowledged that the inspiration was behind Rosie the Riveter. However, investigating conducting the 2000s, we know how shady we are in the 2000s, revealed that some lady named Naomi who worked at the Naval Air Academy served as the true inspiration behind the image. Was she a dom? Right? I mean, look what she associated with. Uncle Sam, Uncle Tom. I mean, Uncle Sam, Betty Boop, Uncle Tom, John Bull, Jane Cleaver, for some reason. But the point I'm trying to make is, this is Rosie the Riveter. Okay, we familiar, right? Real, real kind of butch, a real butch, right, see how the men real small, and the American, they made her real big, like, this is real, real butchy, okay, real dommy, okay, see, she got the overalls on, right, now, the message is, get out the kitchen and get to work, right, this is really, leave the family, this is sad, how they pass this shit down, mm, Troglodyte, troglodyte, troglodytes. Masonic bricks in the back. This is propaganda. This is propaganda. Look at this shit. <clears throat> this is propaganda. Rosie the Riveter isn't who you think she is. Labor statistics predict a brick prop. Labor, hold on, no, 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 excuse me. 
Bureau of Labor Statistics predicted a big problem. Unless action was taken, the shortage of 6 million workers would bring the country's productivity to a halt. In 1943, just months after the United States entered World War II, American men were leaving for active duty overseas. It was critical to prevent interruption in the industry. The solution was clear to the problem. With the exception of a few hundred thousand boys pre-draft age, a government study, the gap will have to be plugged almost entirely by women. So the government decided for you to be an independent chick. The government decided for you to be a boss chick. The government decided family wasn't cool for you. The government decided that kids wasn't good for you. Get your, put your fucking pumps on, put your fucking, see y'all ain't doing what Rosie the River are doing, right? You ain't in the warehouse and the factories and the, and the, and the parking lots and the junkyards, no. You want to stand behind the counter. You want to answer the phones and you want to make sandwiches. In the, right, right. You want to do the, 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 the light work, not the grunt work. Right? So, this wasn't your idea. <clears throat> Roosevelt tasked the uh, Office of War Information Newly Federal Propaganda Agency with selling the idea of women workers to the country. These jobs will have to be glorified as a patriotic war service and American women ought to be persuaded to take them and stick to them, said uh, Officer of War Report. Their importance to a nation engaged in total war must be convincingly present presented. Joining the government's effort where, where private industry and the American media who together generated some of the era's most enduring, well-known images. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So do you do you see what just happened here? Before the company tacked up the next a series of paintings like We Can Do It posted below, each painting bore a different message intended to increase production, boost morale, and avoid abstinism or prevent strikes beyond the Westinghouse factory walls. However, abandoned women remain unknown. Miller's project also unnamed was was unnamed for a while. So they put this. This guy was hired as an a advertising agent to paint a series of posters for the Westinghouse Company during the war, right? So this is this was where this comes from, Rosie the Riveter. Story happening across the world, right? So it, it hit the American airwaves that Rosie the Riveter told a story happening across the country. Women were going to work in record numbers doing jobs unlike those they had ever done. Hmm, wonder why. All the day long, whether rain or shine, the lyrics went, she's part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory. Rosie the Riveter, right? No single woman inside inspired the song. The name Rosie was given for its alternative appeal. In the naming through American, uh, in the naming through, though, an American archetype was born. Okay? Well-known character of hard-working, patriotic woman. So it's a, on her lunch break from the assembly line, she sits denim clad with a riveting, with, with a rivet gun on her lap. Mmm. 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 So it's a black women work by the hundreds uh, of thousands during the war, but were unacknowledged by the government and the mainstream media. Rosie the Riveter is classic propaganda 101, says historian Emmy McLeod. You've got this woman going to work helping the war effort. And what is she wearing? A blue denim jumpsuit and a red bandana. And she's troglodyte. So in that sense, she becomes an icon of the American red, white, and blue. There you go, boss chick. There you go, OnlyFans girl. There you go, single mom. There you go, mom by choice. There you go, single by choice. There you go, I don't want to get married. There you go, I got a PhD. I'm like, here you go. Go get your ass in the part of the American fucking machinery, the system of oppression. Go be a cog in the system 
Fuck your family. We need your we need your men for war. We need your men in prison. Go get on the field. Pull your fucking welding mask down and buckle your overalls up. Right, that was the sentiment. And niggas is going. You females is going for. Okay. Uh, so we say in March, you know, women were. A uh, million of women, 10, 10.8 million women in the country were employed by August. That number had risen to 18 million. Still, women unformally received lower wages than men for the same work. And when the war ended, women were the first to lose their jobs. <clears throat> right? From the 1800s, from the, eight, from the 1980s on, with the weak and doing image uh, proliferated, found its way into pop culture via raft of reproductions. Right, and we're gonna show where else it popped up at. We're gonna show where else it popped up at. The history of jeans. All right, she got something to do with the history of jeans. Okay. Now you see who they now now look at the color. Right, so it hit different when you, now you you smiling in the pic and you you want to be a dumb. We been doing it, right? You done took the propaganda, and and and, do you see what I'm saying? You done took the propaganda and owned it. We been doing it with the sass. You don't even know you want some slave shit. Right, they tell this is what they told you. This ain't your idea. Man, now you own it. We been doing it. Look at the welding mask. This Pride Month. You see where this is going? Mm Mm-hmm. We did it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You 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 owning it, right? You think this shit is cute, right? This like a nigga owning gang banging. This like a nigga owning crib, right? It's like a, this like a nigga owning the whips and chains that the master put on you. Come on, man. You see where this is going? Mm-hmm. 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 You never see Big Mama doing this shit proudly. You had to be whipped. You had to. You had to be whipped. You had to whip Big Mama to make her say some shit, do some shit like this, right? I don't know what that. Is. Look at that forearm. Is that is that a miss or a mister? I don't know what's going. Look at that forearm. Okay, come on, man. Y'all y'all took this shit hook, line, and sinker, owning it. I ain't do no research, right? You smiling in the pic. You smiling in the pic. We been doing it. Right? We carrying the community. We doing all the work. Right? See how interchangeable it is? Come on, man. Come on, man. This is propaganda. Proper fucking ganda. Right here in your face. You see where this is going? Huh? All right, now. Let's see. Uh, let's start with Pride Month. Let's start with it. I wonder why. I wonder how I knew she was going to be associated with Pride Month. Come on, man. I wonder how. Pride Rosie the River the Rainbow LGBT poster for sale. $12, $14. $14. $14. We celebrate Pride Month. Rosie the River the Trust reaffirms its commitment. Right? Rosie the River the LGB. Rosie the LGB. Newsweek did an article on it. 
Okay, Newsweek did an article on it. Has seen many changes in the treatment of so and so's, but some may be eye opening were those he experienced during World War II. All the women wore pants. Everyone smoked on smoke breaks. Okay. You see the masculine, masculine, you know, they masculinizing them. You know what I mean? They apparently recognize her as one of their own. A, a les. Right? World War II has long been a historian and an important movement in the LGB movement. During the war, millions of young women left their homes and small towns for the military, living in the same sex environment where they exposed to a greater variety of volume of people they had previously never known. Right? Women also left their homes to work in factories, living in same sex settings under similar conditions. Some H sexuals were not necessarily declaring they were lesbo, says the middle historian and gender and women's studies professor at the University of Illinois. So he ain't talking out the side of his fucking neck. But it creates a space where it's safer and easier for other women to be like you, in which there's also but a military and the home front. More tolerance because it's the war and we're all working together. It was a watershed movement in LGBT history, but public historian Donald Gray said most people in places that talk about World War II do not acknowledge it. There's a National D-Day Museum in New Orleans and they don't touch this, she say. Right? They looked at it like pioneers. Right? While recent decades have seen the inclusion of LGBT specialized courses and menus, Rosie the Riveter Rosie the Riveter Park is doing its pioneer, says Gravely, historian and cons- uh, exhibit consultant. Rosie the LGBT campaign as a part of recent trend within the federal government to openly recognize LGBT people. Let me read that again. They view the Rosie LGBT campaign as a part of a recent trend within the federal government to openly recognize LGBT people. This can be seen in an attempt by National Historical Landmark Program, right? National Register of Historical Places to acknowledge buildings and landmarks significant to LGB history. San Francisco and Los Angeles are conducting studies to document such places of importance. So they got a Rosie the River to Park, right? San Francisco long the, the so-and-so Mecca is not surprising. Rosie the River to Park is located across the bay in Richmond. Mm-hmm. So this is, so you see, acknowledgement, the park is basically dedicated acknowledgement of the severe prejudice of members of the LGBT community faced during the World War II and this anonymous tip line was established. So that's a whole Newsweek article associating Rosie the River with the with the pride. Lady Human Right LGBT Rosie the River the T shirt. Right, let's get into some images. Okay. There you go. Bing, bang, boom. Boom, bang, bing. Okay. I saw it coming a mile away. I saw it coming a mile away. Don't tell me you ain't see it coming a mile away. Come on, man. A mile away. Don't be salty. Don't be salty. Seeking LGBT stories of World War II. Rosie the Riveter. Come on, man. Mm, look at the fist in the air. Rainbow Rosie the River the merch. And it's only the fist in the air. Rainbow the River the Rosie. Look, it's just the fist in the air. Rainbow Rosie the River the merch. Look what it say. Ro- Rainbow Rosie the River the merch. It's just the fist in the air. Right? 
You see, it's just a fist in the air. Just a fist in the air, right? Now, let's make it make sense. Let's see. She associated with feminism. The, fan, the fantasy history to give representation example from history asserts that Rosie the Riveter was the star of the campaign aimed at recruiting female workers to war. The assertion undergoes. Uh, let's see. Rosie the Riveter, the face of the feminist movement. It says, Rosie continues to be referenced by feminist groups as a symbol of perseverance and defiance. Okay. Okay. I knew that was coming. Rosie the Riveter isn't who she thinks she isn't who you think she is by PBS. She, who she really, who was, was she really Rosie? Right, somebody did an article, Rosie's role as a feminist. We ain't even got to click on it. I already see what they about to say. Rosie's role as a feminist. Okay. Once they got the black girl. Pop culture. U.S. Army Ordnance School. This is an Army website. Rosie the Riveter is used as a symbol of American feminism and women's economic advantage. The Army telling you that. She's a pop car. This is Washington Post. Analyst. Rosie the Riveter isn't who she thinks she is. Analysis. She's a pop culture icon. An immensely popular feminist image. Need I say more? Come on, tally boot. Need I say more? Right? Cold blooded feminists. All right, let's see if we got any images. Of the feminist Rosie the Riveter. Feminist slogan joke. Rosie the River, the feminism graphic. It's licensable, licensable, so I ain't gonna pick, I ain't gonna click on it. But, yeah, I mean, we already proved that she associated with that. Now, one more thing. BLM is a communist organization, right? Marxism underpins Black Lives Matter. Mark, Black Lives Matter and Marxism. Are they Marxists? BLM is a new Marxist revolution. The National Socialist Movement and Black Lives Matter. Remember, socialism was associated with the arm and hammer. How did we get here? They are socialists. Black Lives Matter print socialism. Okay. <clears throat> Did you see that? You need more? Marxists. Taking a knee. How Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter became synonymous with communism. Black Lives Matter is a Marxist movement. The new Marxist revolution. So... <clears throat> Marxist was a Freemason. Right? <clears throat> the sixth law of repression and Freemasonry and communism. <clears throat> Hold on, let's let's 
Karl Marx. Let's see. Let's see. Karl Marx on Freemasonry. There we go. Marx says on free Freemasonry and Brotherhood. Karl Marx says the, the destruction of Christianity. Karl Marx and Freemasonry. Now let's get a pick of Karl Marx. First thing you see, hand in the jacket, looking like Frederick Douglass. Cold-blooded Freemason. Okay, cold-blooded Freemason. Freemason, Karl Heinrich Marx. Now this ain't even a black dude, but Black Lives Matter following <clears throat> some German Freemason. All right, Karl Marx, Freemasonry. Look at the foot. All right, we know the we know the head and hand is a Freemasonic. Right, we know that's a Freemasonic symbol. Okay, we ain't got to go there. We know that the devil and Karl Marx. Right, out of chaos, both Freemasons, political system control. Okay, social cataclysm. Right? Rebel from parents and, and God and country. The education of all children in the movement that they can get along without mother's care shall be state institutions and state expense. Love your country. Love your... Love your country. Your country is the land where your parents sleep. Blah, blah, blah. So these were order out of chaos. Right? They were working together. You see Karl Marx and the satanic roots of communism. Okay? Now, this should bring it all home for you. Right? This should bring it all home for you. Now, we see what Karl Marx is, right? You, 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 you see what Karl Marx is. We talked about Arm and Hammer sickle of Saturn, look at the crescent moon and star right next to it, look at the crescent moon and star, the man who changed the world forever, right? Now, Black Lives Matter, they look up to Karl Marx. Right? Black Lives Matter, they love Karl Marx. They call themselves Marxists. The making of a new Marxist revolution, Black Lives Matter. They, you know, they love Karl Marx. You see the Patrice colors. Right, fists in the air, right? We saw the fist in the air was a symbol of uh, Rosie the Riveter, the feminist. Right? So now you understand the fist in the air. Right? But, yeah, BLM is, is a socialist, Marxist situation. And we see what Marx is, right? Now, the founders of BLM... Uh, all, all the founders was LGBT. What is Black Lives Matter? From the start, the founders of Black Lives Matter always have put LGBT voice in the center of the conversation, at the center, right? This post that came out of black guys getting deleted by the police, but at the center of it is the LGBT voice. The movement was founded by three black women, uh, two of whom identify as queer. Believe you me, all three of them are. 
all three of them are. Can you tell which one ain't? Take a wild guess which one ain't. Take a wild guess which one ain't. Right? Can you can you guess which one ain't? It's a reason why you can't. It's a reason why you can't. Okay. It's a reason why you can't. All three of them. And they see the one that wasn't Penn's letter for National Coming Out Day. Come on, man. Bringing black queer folks. So do you do you see where where all of this is going? Do you see where the independent, you know, independent chick, boss chick, leave your family? That's Rosie the River, the feminism propaganda. Look, propaganda. Black Lives Matter. She doing a Masonic hand sign. I right there, you the video where she was doing voodoo. Patrice Collins, I gave you the video. I, I did the video where show you she was doing voodoo. Right? And this was all came out to be a scam. Right? So this shit also got to do with the feminist movement. Right? Black Lives Matter, why black feminism? Right? They they right there with it. Even feminine, we, we, maybe I'll do the video on where black feminism comes from. That's, a, that's propaganda, Sayah. Right? Kaminga Taylor interviewed the black feminist Barbara Smith. Like, how you a black feminist? Film depicts Black Lives Matter and Me Too as new feminist ways. Come on, man. Black feminism and transitional solidarity, mobilization. See, a mother by choice, for choice, right? These people is, 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 they begging to get, as if, you know, Mar- Margaret Sanger didn't give you Planned Parenthood. Now you out marching forward. You see how stupid you look? Margaret, man, I got another video. I got another entry to this coming, Right? But you see how feminism tied right into this shit. Right? And this is how we believe Black Lives Matter, feminism is for everyone. Come on. Black Lives Matter, man. Gender, sexuality, feminism. Look, they got hood feminism. Notes for the women that forgot a movement. Let the women that the movement forgot. Look at it. Yeah, on this next note, let me let me show y'all where this feminism shit come from. Y'all stay plugged in.